drinking cities. Magical havens built for a perfect vacation. Unless you have kids, but come on. What are you, a nerd? Building a family unit? Contributing to a new generation? Whatever! Stop investing in the future of the human race for one second. Leave them at home, take a week off of work, get on a plane, and remind yourself of why you can only handle seeing your college friends for a few days a year. They suck. I'm looking at you, Brian. These are the 10 best drinking cities in America right now. Number 10, Las Vegas. Las Vegas is an undeniably great drinking city. Sex work is legal, gambling is legal, cocaine is legal. I'm sorry, what? Good game is not. Okay, well, then I have to make a call. Is Okay. You can drink outside. You can walk around with your drink outside. It's like New Orleans, but safe. Ah, it's not safe. Nothing says fun like getting lost in a casino for hours, never finding your friends, like ever, like where are they? What was even the point of the meetup spot if I'm the only one that's gonna meet at the meetup spot? You know, this whole trip, it feels like it feels like we've been drifting apart since college, and I have work friends. You know, I got other friends now. It, it feels desperate to even just get together. What? Okay, I'm gonna wait five more minutes. Five more minutes in the meetup spot. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll do whatever I want. Is what I'll do. Number nine. Austin. Keep Austin weird, or at least uh, keep tech startups from completely eroding the city's cultural landscape. It's already not weird. Have you been to Austin? It's a wee work with a cowboy hat on. Every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, the police block off 6th Street to cars, which turns all of downtown Austin into the walking dead. The main thing the walkers wanted to do was throw up into a pedicab. Number 8. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is the dive bar of cities. Unpretentious, cheap, and full of people who know how to have a good time. It doesn't have as many tourist attractions as some of the other cities on this list, but that just means you can spend every night of your trip getting drunk without feeling guilty for skipping a tour of the historic opera house or whatever. Here's a Pittsburgh tip. Pierogies act as a military-grade yingling sponge. Number seven, Portland, Oregon. Portland has a semi-wholesome reputation, but don't let those hippies fool you. All the coffee shops are actually bars in disguise to make people feel less bad about drinking at 6 a.m. Fact, no one in Portland has a job. They also have sick cocktail bars if you want to smell elderflower liquor when you're puking later. Grab a coffee, hop on your bike, cry in the rain for a second, and then drink an IPA. Congratulations. You're in the Decemberists now. Number six, Milwaukee. Their baseball team is named after beer, so it has to be a drinking city. You can't take the alcohol away from these people. Imagine if Pittsburgh didn't have steel or Cleveland didn't have racism. Midwestern America is best enjoyed with minimum a light buzz. And Milwaukee has beer gardens in public parks, so get drunk and play catch with your son. It's what the government wants. Number five, San Diego. San Diego is not actually originally on this list, but our researcher drove to Tijuana, blacked out, woke up naked in San Diego, and said, this counts. The weather is perfect for outdoor drinking every single day of the year. In January and February, when all the eastern cities are stuck indoors daydreaming, San Diego is day drinking. Number four, Chicago. Chili dogs, deep dish pizza, that bean thing. Has anyone in Chicago ever not been hammered? Baseball is arguably the most important sport in the city of Chicago, and the fans consumed enough alcohol to tolerate losing for 108 years, so... We're talking about almost two grandpas of alcoholism. Is that a drinking city? Yes. It's a drinking city. Also, Chicago's many bars include a legendary little speakeasy turned venue called The Hideout. Andrew Bird started there, Mavis Staples recorded an album there, and guess what? It's a great bar, and now the Lincoln Yards mega project is trying to get rid of it. Don't let this happen. Make it a landmark. You like Jeff Tweedy? Well then fix this, Chicago! Number three, New York City. The city that never sleeps, and technically it's not sleeping if you're blackout drunk in a gutter. There are just so many bars in New York City per square mile. If you're indoors in Manhattan, odds are that you're in a location where you can drink. Any discussion of drinking cities has to account for the late night drunk snack. And the NYC pizza slice is so cheap, so good, and so everywhere. On a purely practical note, it might be the easiest city to get around without driving. So next time you're planning a weekend of booze and ask yourself, NYC or DUI, baby? Number two, New Orleans. New Orleans is a town built on drinking. And I mean that literally. The streets are paved with calcified vomit. It tells you something that their most popular tourist trap is called Bourbon Street. Think about how weird it would be to have a gin Avenue or Vodka Freeway. Number one, Nashville. Alcohol makes lots of things better, but there's nothing it more immediately enhances than live music. And Nashville ain't called the world's honky-tonky rootin' tootin' music village for nothing. And it's not called that at all, actually, but after a few beers, you can call anything whatever you want. No food soaks up booze better than fried chicken and biscuits. Your liver will high-five your stomach with gratitude. It's a rare city where you can go to a saloon or a tavern and not feel like you're in a cheesy RPG set in the Wild West. And folks, that's the top 
top 10 drinking cities in America right now. Why do we add on the right now? Well, the first reason is I don't make the titles on this website. And the second thing is Seattle's cooking up some breweries and boy, are they hot on that number 10 spot. So who's to say what the ranking is going to be next year? But, uh, you know, I don't know. Just like and comment the video and just say, you know, this, hey, this guy's a loser. He doesn't know anything. We want to, let's find him and beat his ass. That's, that's what you guys are going to do anyway. I mean, fine, you know, just have fun. I'm trying to be helpful. Listen, click the link if you want to go to Thrillist's website and read an actual article that really details some of the great things about, you know, drinking across the country. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. What if I wanted to like a nationalist rant at the end of this? It's like, this is the greatest country in the world. Yeah. You know what? I shouldn't even be on the air right now. So see you guys next episode. Sorry. Okay. Bye bye.